Hi Ben, super session, just following up on the images that I've sent across to you today uh, with just a quick video recap of the key points. Basically establishing a slightly more appropriate setup was our goal, we can see here at the start uh, as per the images, the upper COG in the yellow dot is way out in front of the lower COG. This is because you've moved the weight forward by simply leaning with the upper body, with the shoulders towards the target. The right knee is also very kinked in which is locating the pelvis and the hips in not really a, an appropriate position to make that first move away from the golf ball. So we tend to get that little bit of a, a sort of a bit faster, a little bit of a feeling of bumping off it. You don't do it a lot on that one. And as we discussed in the session, uh, when we looked at, say, Charlie, for instance, in some of the footage, there is a little bit of a move off early in the piece, P1 to P2, and then from P2 to P4, he gradually moves back into his original address position. One of the issues when we set up in this manner is all things left equal, we produce a very steep angle of attack, quite a descending blow. And one of the ways you counteract that is by dropping the head back during the hit. Um, that's something that you, you mentioned during your session that you were feeling like you were doing. Uh, having said that overall, happy with the progress, certainly more extension in the through swing, more linear movement. Simply because you're now in a position where you have to move in a different manner. Hitting a lot of shots with a ball back in the stance. The only way you can get a ball flight is by using the ground differently, pushing up, and as a result, when we check it at P9, when the right arm's parallel with the floor, we're seeing at this point much less flex in the pelvis, much less flex in the trail knee and the right ankle doesn't kick out as much to where it used to. You get in a situation where the heel is inside the toe at this point. They're just nice things to catalogue um, as you go to chart your progression because as we discussed, as you improve at this, the changes will become less significant. They won't be any less important but they become harder to spot. So it's important that you keep cataloguing the images as you go so that you're keeping a clear perspective on things. So we just take a look back at P1. We go back to our address position and take a little look at the changes we made. We put a process in place that allows you to uh, create an appropriate separation or positioning of the two centres. You've got the upper COG and the lower COG. So centre of the shoulder turn, centre of the hips. What we're going to do is we're going to take our stance we're going to stand up with a club out in front of us so we get the weight evenly distributed. Once we're in that position, we're going to move the weight forward by flexing the lead knee. So all we're going to do here is flex that lead leg more to put the weight forward. Now this is not necessarily something that everybody would do, uh, but certainly in your case we need to do this uh, for the short term so that you get familiar with a certain feel and certain look at setup. So flexing the knee forward, flexing the left knee more to move the weight forward, then put yourself back into your address position. So create that, that tilt forward at address. And then what we start to see now is a more balanced P1. The right hip doesn't seem as, you know, it doesn't protrude as much, see much more of the left hip. The arms as they hang, hitting the middle of the pelvis, rather than being pushed way out to the right of it. And more importantly, the axis tilt that we're creating here, so the condition between the upper and lower COG is much more appropriate. Uh, within the pattern, we can have the centres stacked on top of one another, and we can also handle a little bit of a situation where the lower centre is out in front of the, the upper centre. Uh, we wouldn't want too much of that. Uh, and when we create that sort of scenario, we do it by pushing the hips forward, not by dropping the head back. But in your case for now, I'm quite happy to have both centres on top of one another. Once you're in that position, this makes it easier for you to keep the right knee more uh, straighter, if you will, with the right knee pointing out slightly. Not quite as much as the right foot, but certainly pointing out so that we don't get that kinked in look, which makes it easier for you to make an appropriate takeaway. So from there now, easier to get the left shoulder working down, a bit of left knee flex going in, um, 
is what's lacking in the swings that you make where you're moving off the golf ball. So when you move off the golf ball too much, the left knee is working inwards. So the left knee is working behind the ball, but isn't flexing forward enough to offset it and keep you stable. So adding a little bit of flex in that lead knee at setup is not a bad thing. That then is creating a situation where you're more stacked on top of it at the top. So P4 is looking a lot tidier. Let's take it to the top now. Less lifting of the arms. Uh, leg action is looking a lot more appropriate. You can see you've got more flex towards the target in this lead leg. Towards the target line. Uh, left knee still moving in. I've got a problem with that. That allows the hips to turn, allows the shoulders to travel, propels the left arm without lifting uh, the arms off the torso. So I've got a problem with the movement in the left knee. So with a better setup, a little bit of a tidying up at the top of the backswing, we're starting to see the benefits now of separating the two centres. I've got the, the club to the side of the head, and all I'm trying to do is stop the head drifting forward in the through swing. Uh, generally speaking, what would happen is, on this one, you're starting to push up out the ground. The lower body is definitely extending much better than it did. But as we come through the ball, the chest tends to drift forward. And there's very little separation of the two centres. On this one, I'm going to hold the head in position. That's going to stop the upper centre drifting forward. And that now is giving you a more tucked look. And it's meaning that you've got to extend for longer, which can be seen in the way the right leg is positioned. The level of the belt has raised slightly. We've got more extension in the neck. We've certainly got more extension in the upper torso. So plenty of improvement, just tidying that extension up. You're adding extension, you're using the ground much better. And we'll just layer in some detail now to improve the overall look of the swing. Good luck with it. I look forward to meeting up in February for a little catch-up and then the big session later on in the month. Well done.